Thank you. When I was 12 years old, I sent in my application for the famous artist schools, and they sent back a letter saying that I would have to wait. I was too young. I would have to wait until I was 21. So when I was 21, they sent me a letter saying that I could now take one of the uh, one of the courses of the famous artist schools. And uh, they said, and you might also be interested in the fact that we have just started a cartoon course, and that might interest you. The problem was, I had already been teaching in the cartoon course for a year at that point. <laughs> I took the letter to Al Dorn and showed it to him, and he went through the roof. He said, but this can't happen around here. What is going on here? And he went down to where all the secretaries are and the people that send out the mail and said, this, I don't want this to ever happen again. I don't want any of our instructors getting it, you know. So, I, was, I was the youngest um, instructor they had ever hired at the school. I lied. I, w I'm, I wasn't real. I like to say I was, but in reality, it was Ben Stahl Jr., who was the youngest, the son of one of the founding uh, faculty. So we called the 12 guys the founding faculty. And, uh, and as courses were added, the writing school, the photography school, the cartoon school, they, we each had our 12 famous cartoonists, famous writers, famous photographers. They always wanted to do a sculpture course, but they could never figure out how to do it, how to, have the stuff sent in. You know, the, the Westport Post Office was beleaguered enough with mail. We got half the mail that came into Westport. There were people in the darkest reaches of Africa that knew the name Westport, Connecticut. It was known all over the world. A lot of our students were prisoners in penitentiaries because they got the course free as a rehabilitative thing. And if they if they maintained good marks, so we always tried to give them a little better mark, you know, some, than some of the others maybe. If they, if they got good marks, they could continue the course. If they didn't, snatch it away from them, give it to somebody else. So one of the things that um, a lot of people don't know, I think, about the school is that the 12 founding artists that had stock in the school and were the owners of the school and the people that wrote the courses supplied all that wonderful artwork that showed everybody how to do everything. Um, part of their deal was that they would come to the school at least uh, once a year or so and uh, give us a talk on their work and critique our work. So our criticisms as the instructors were criticized by Norman Rockwell and Fred Ludekins and everybody, all the, all the 12 guys. And in the cartoon course, we had visits from Rube Goldberg. I, I've smoked cigars with Rube Goldberg at the Westport restaurant. We had Virgil Parch, does anybody remember him? Vip, Vip, Virgil Parch, he used to visit. That was a big kick for me. I was the modern guy. In our little clutch of six instructors in the cartoon course, they were all old timers. One guy came from the Lone Ranger, one from Cats and Jammer Kids, one from the, our leader and, and boss was uh, the Popeye artist. And, uh, and then Barney Thompson, he was a girly artist, had worked for Playboy and Life and Judge humor magazines. So um, I lost my train of thought. There was, anyway, they were, uh, so they, they would visit. And um, another thing probably a lot of people don't know about the school is that we had uh, visiting students that would come and we actually had tour guides on staff just to show people through the building. So in the summertime, we had people coming in all the time uh, to tour through the place and they would ring a bell when they came into the lobby downstairs and they said, we're visiting students, we would like to have a tour. And they would get to meet Al Dorn and everything. And once in a while, he would even take them out to lunch. It was a very interesting place. Anyway, they would ring a little bell downstairs because we didn't have air conditioning in the earlier days. I was there from 56 to 64, and um, it was sweltering hot sometimes. We were all sent home a lot of times. We worked seven hours a day. 
So they would ring the bell when the visitors were coming. So the guys upstairs, the painters in their little studios painting the critiques could put their pants back on, you know, <laughs> and, and stuff. And, and Joe Paulsino could put his dark sunglasses on. He'd stand at his easel with his dark sunglasses because he thought he looked really good with the dark sunglasses on. So he'd be painting the critiques. They actually painted the critiques. It wasn't like art instruction, ink, that we got credit for all their ads, draw me. When I'm at a party and I say, I used to work at the famous art school, they say, draw me people. I said, no, that was art instruction. But we got all the credit from their ads. Everybody thought that was the famous artist schools. But their, their critiques were very um, plebeian, mundane. They were by rote, they were all, they were kind of, um, wrapped out automatically, you know. And, and the famous artist schools, while we didn't make a lot of money, it was the most devoted group of guys you ever saw in your life. It, the camaraderie was amazing. We would visit back and forth between our offices all day long. And those guys poured their heart and soul into every critique, believe me. And uh, I had a guy, uh, I con uh, contacted me that used to be a student and he, uh, well, I found his blog actually on the internet and he had uh, claimed that uh, he had been a student of mine and that I had given him all uh, A pluses and A's all the time. And he said, um, I think that those instructors were told to give the students these high marks. So that really got me mad. So I wrote to him and I said, nobody ever told me what kind of mark to give a student. I just it was all on our own, whatever we felt like giving them. So I said, how about this? Why don't you send me a drawing? He was now a very successful gag cartoonist. And he, I, it was, this was you know, years and years later. We were both old guys by then. And he, I said, why don't you send me one of your cartoons and I will do a critique on it, just like the old days. We'll have fun. I'll do the overlays and I'll send it back to you. He said, that's great. I'll put it on my blog. I said, it's good. And I promised him that I would not give him an A or an A plus. And so I did his critique and sent it back to him and I said, and as always, George, and as I promised you, your, uh, your grade is C. But <laughs> we, the, way we, uh, the way we did the lessons where we would, uh, we worked seven hours a day, uh, but we got an hour off for lunch, so we worked six hours a day. We would probably be able to do maybe four lessons in an hour. So we did between maybe 18 to 24 lessons an hour. And um, when, you, when you got used to it, you know, you could, you could do them that quickly. Uh, but they were elaborate um, criticisms because we would do uh, a tissue paper overlay and we would be able to uh, see through it so you could uh, we could circle with our prismacolor pencils red and black point out things and then we would on a, on a, a more opaque paper actually redraw usually redraw the student's cartoon uh, showing um, maybe a better way that it could be handled and then we wrote a letter to each student and uh, so I, I was lucky, uh, I was so young, but I, I was working with all these older guys who had had long experiences, but I was a little more adaptable, I think, than they were, and I was able to, uh, to take to the uh, honking the uh, letters on the, uh, on the machine, you know, and um, make it, because I had to, we had to make our letters up later on. We had formulated letters, uh, but, this course had just started when I went in there and we didn't know what anybody was going to do past lesson three. So we were making it up as we went along. But there were rooms where uh, in, the, in the later courses um, that had been around for a while, they had figured something out. Everybody makes the same mistakes. If you give them a problem in perspective or tell them to draw a barn or this and that, they're all going to do. So we were able to make manufacture sentences that would apply to everybody. And they would leave a blank space in the sentence. And the drawing of your, we would write in barn, um, <laughs> you know, can be helped if you had done such and such. But you know, it's amazing how fast you can get. I mean, that is the best experience. I had gone to art school for uh, two years, a, a painting school. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist and illustrator. But later on, as in high school, I decided I wanted to be a painter. So I went to school. I, as a matter of fact, my one of my closest friends in art school was Norman Rockwell's oldest son, Jerry Jarvis. 
And um, so, uh, <laughs> where am I? I'm getting old. I'm losing my way. Right, let's, let's call it that. Let's call it a day. Okay.